I, I tell you what I was going to pull up. There's there's a few um, a few people, quite a few people online that that and bless them, they they try and work out what we're playing. They usually overcomplicate things. It's it's usually much more simpler than they're aiming for. Um, but there's some things they consistently get wrong, and I'd like to clear up a few things now for those very people. Uh, and please do carry on unpicking our songs. You know, I, I, I'm loving it. Um, one of the ones they always get wrong, and I've, I've seen a few kind of cover bands, bar bands, try it, is Peter Pumpkinhead. Peter One chord in particular, they never quite get in that, and it, it's um, the whole thing's in D, um, and then the other chord that sort of forms the verse is what somebody said to me. Oh, that's the Brazilian chord. That's in an awful lot of Brazilian music, yeah. and when they pointed it out, I thought, "Shit, they're right. It is." I thought I'd invented this chord. <laughs> and and the chord it is if you play a straight bar on the G flat position, normal tuning, add a G and add a D. It's it's you know it's it's it is very you hear it in a lot of Brazilian music. I've no idea what it's called. Please tell me. Page six nine. Sorry, say again. Uh, G major six nine. G major six nine. Wow. Seriously, I'm amazed that you know all this. <laughs> so that's the other chord. It's a. And that's the one they never get. They but always they play instead, usually for that G chord. Uh, um... Or just a g you know that kind of thing but it's not it's it's your it's your brazilian full brazilian wax going on here it's just a, it's just a yeah and i i thought yeah, i've invented a chord but no i hadn't brazil beat me to it you got, you got that first yeah and there's <clears throat> in the b section of that the only other thing, they, they don't leave the G ringing open, which you have to. You've got to leave the G ringing. Yeah. That's a trick I nabbed from Pete Townsend. The, the Who stuff sounds so pokey because of that ringing G. Yeah. It's so much better than... So much nicer. Yeah. yeah in fact... Um, uh, uh, Earn Enough for Us it is next on the list because it's got the same mistake where, where <clears throat> if you just leave that G ringing open it sounds much nicer uh, So the first chord is a G with an open G and an F with an open G. Then a kind of a C. Just leave that G ringing, don't touch it. Um, Respectable Street is the, is another one that, that people just, they cannot pick out that opening chord. And, and I think every tribute band I've seen as well gets that one wrong. Songs in B, and the other chord they're getting wrong is which is a C sharp seven open G again. What's that? F sharp. 
and so on. It's a dissonant chord, that one, isn't it? It really is, but it, isn't it lovely? lovely? It's it's really a car door being slammed. That's what, <laughs> what, that's what we need, you know. Heard the neighbor slam his car door. It's, it's, uh, it, it, to me, that's, that's the, that's the, the synesthesia thing. That's the slamming car door, you know. Right. Yeah. But they never get that. It's so easy, kids, once you, once you know. Um, you, I was listening to the recording and I heard that chord. I, it would take me a little while to, to, to figure it out. Yeah, so it's, a pretty, it, it would take a it's while. a pretty dense one. Yeah, it is dense, yeah. yeah. You know, the, the, the trick, you know, if I need to work out what, what, you know, bands are playing, if I can find live film or studio film and I'd stare at their hands, yeah. you know, you think, oh, I've been playing all right now, wrong, all these years. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is, you know. Yeah. Um, Rhodes Girdle the Globe is one that people say, How the hell do you play that? And what are those chords? Um, this is ultimately a, a game of two halves. Dave is playing something very, very different to me. Yeah. Um, but I, I'll, I'll just do this because I'm amazed I remembered this. I think what happens is because, and, and this is the nature of creativity as well, when you're creating, you need your head clear. You don't want any performance space cluttered with remembering performance mm -hmm. if you see what i mean that's a different brain yeah if you're performing you have to remember everything in order and all the right notes the right chords the right words whatever it is you can't create if you're if you have that head going so i found that to create i had to forget how to perform stuff clear my head of that then I could, but for some reason, banging this and all these unusual chords and things from Rose Girl of the Globe, because we played it so much on tour, it's never left. Um, and no matter how I think I've cleared my memory of it, it just comes back in, you know. It... That's enough for an intro for you. Great, um, great intro. Yeah, then the verses are. Now, that chord occurs a lot in my earlier writing and some of the later stuff. Oh, that's a lovely chord. Yeah, it's like um, an A major. A major. A major. A major. Nine. Oh, okay. Because you've got the there. G major nine. Then the middle section is something like a That sort of thing, you know. You've got all these again, like we were talking about earlier on, these twists and turns, these unexpected transitions, you know. Um, and I see you. It shouldn't work, but you, you know, you know why they yeah. do work. It's just because they do. They don't. They don't have to work. If they work in your expectations, they're dull. 
Yeah. But they also take your vocal melody in different places. That's why your melodies are unique because the way you're singing these melodies over these chords that are unusual uh, progressions. And it's taking yeah, you somewhere else that you might not ordinarily go if you were playing just yeah, snap progressions, you know. Yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. Sometimes the chords lead the melody and sometimes the melody dictates where the chord has to go. Mm. It's not a hard and fast rule, you know. Oh. Um, but yeah, pe people, are, they never get road to go. And that's only what I'm playing, a taster of what I'm playing. Dave's playing something from Planet Venus over on, on his side, you know. And But where the two crash together, it's, you yeah. know, that's what makes the... Um, another a, a chord I use a lot is this inversion. Straight bar. So that's an E, right? We've got our A flat on the bottom. Yeah. You use that chord a lot. Um, and I was going to say, talk about uh, books are burning. Books are burning in the main square. I, I knew I wanted to write a song about uh, um, censorship and, and destroying books. Mm. Um, seeing on the news, you know, lots of the, what's his name? Uh, um, oh, the fellow that, that got attacked a year or so ago. Um, uh, uh, what's his name? Author, um, Indian. Oh, oh yeah, uh, uh, Salman Rushdie. Salman Rushdie. Yeah, you know, you see a lot of people setting fire to, to his books on the news. And I thought, oh, here we go again. It's, book burning you know where that ends up you know fahrenheit nine what's the what's the truth of film fahrenheit oh uh, fahrenheit 451 451 that's it yeah. yeah great film yeah yeah um no i knew i wanted to write a song about it and i got part of the way in book book books are burning and i knew i and then i thought where the hell do i go next with it and I just couldn't find where I wanted to go next. And so like when I get bored, oh, I always put some music on. Anything I've ever fancied learning. Oh, yeah, I get around the Beach Boys. And there's a bit in that that's uh, I get around. Da, 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 da. But it's that, oh, what is that change? And I sat there for like 20 minutes or something trying to figure out what is that thing it just sounds like a subtle shift up da, 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 da. he's playing an e7 but with that the a flat on the bottom something like that there anyway it was that unexpected shift of the movement da, 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 da. or in my case the movement of da, 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 da. books are burning da, 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 da. And I thought I'm having that I'm having that <laughs> you know I never I never would have found that subtle shift underneath you know coming from underneath so I had that and and then got to the verse section Bit out of tune. That's why it was only 141 quid. Favorite chord. But moving that down, it's oh, that's and you know a lot of cover bands are doing that. They get that wrong because they don't know that that or is one of my faves so just messing around with one of my faves but it's that oh that's so sad what happens when you burn books you get that sadness 
millions. Sometimes I'm asked how to play the drums and why I sing millions. <laughs> Literally, it's, it's so easy, it's another twitch one. Oh, yeah. oh. Sounded like somebody bicycling to me. I thought, who bicycles? Oh, the Chinese do. Oh yeah, here we go, this is what it's about. It sounded like pedals going around. Mm. Yeah. It's just that little twitch hammering off the... But that was a recovery from an old Barry Andrews number he had called Things Fall to Bits, and it was about faulty, faulty Eastern uh, sort of electronic stuff. Yeah. And I thought, well, I'm going to find a, a pantomime Eastern... <laughs> You know, you know what I mean. You know, yeah. something pantomime, Ying Tong Yid Lai Po Eastern kind of thing, and and we didn't do the song. And I thought, you know, I actually quite like that interval. You know, I quite like. It's that interesting because you hear that interval in in Chinese music. You know, the the fourths that move around. It, yeah, exactly. Know. It's it's the old sort of that sort of thing. You know, well, it, you know what it is. It's. We're back there. Ah, yeah, Sonny Rollins. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Andy, what is that chord at the start? And you play throughout that. What is it? It's a G, an open G, slid up to a C. Isn't that wondrous? It's so it moronic. You just idiot first day folk guitar but you slide it up here and you get oh, it's, it's like seeing something marvelous you know da -da 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 -da. turns into beetle land you know <laughs> all things it ends up all things beetle um, there's, there's definitely a penchant for this i mean even though from a technical standpoint it's it's it really irrelevant whether you know it or not because the, the proof is in what you do which is so unique but from from my standpoint if i'm looking at it and i'm trying to figure out what's going on you from you know a technical standpoint there is a proclivity for this sound and, and it's like they it's called the lydian sound and really what it is, is the major scale, but with one note changed, and it's the fourth okay, note. So say we're in G. Instead of, playing a G. instead of playing a C natural that you play, play a C sharp. Whoa. And that's your Jason and the Argonauts sound. I mean, you can't reduce your songs to just that by any stretches of the imagination. However, it's a, it's a characteristic of your music, which I find fascinating. And that's where the weeping quality comes in, where those, you know, those things that you talked about earlier on, you know, where you're trying to make a statement, an emotional musical statement. This sharp four lends itself to that evocativeness, you know, the, the, like I said, that weeping uh, sensation you get listening to some it, of your music. Is that the same feeling you get when if... Which I use quite a lot is... Yeah. yeah, but sometimes you use it with a, a, a dominant seventh, which means that the seventh note is flattened, and then that becomes like a, a instead of a Lydian, it becomes a Lydian dominant. So it's it's basically the, the Lydian G scale that you play, but instead of playing the uh, the F sharp going up the scale, you play an F natural, and that would give you the kind of similar sound, but a more harsh, kind of more um, edgy type of sound. Right, right, yeah.
But um, yeah, that's I mean, that's one of the things that are many that I love about your music is, is that the, that in some cases you're using very standard chord progressions, but it's the voicings that you use. It's like you can sit down and you say, OK, well, I mean, I did this in one of my analytical videos. So uh, I did it with Chalk Hills and Children, where I just took the basic form, the basic chords and then transcribed the notes that I heard in the recording and realized that Yes, they were standard chords, but what you had done with them was so special. You know, you put these inversions and these interesting voicings in there. And I think that's one of the other things that stands out in your music, which which I find very appealing, you know. Well, I was uh, I must admit, I lost sleep uh, uh, over the fact that. Uh, I, hang on a second. He's talking to Steve Vai and now he's <laughs> talking to me. It's like, you know, it's I'm going from Einstein to a chimp, you know, and, and oh, that's. Yeah. It's you know, because I've typed the word pop on a typewriter. There was only a million of us for a million years typing until accidentally one of us came up with the word pop. You know, it's it's wow. He must be some sort of genius chimp. No, you know, look, you know, just because the the the, the technical stuff is not there, it doesn't mean anything, you know. And I think some people mis misinterpret that, you know. It's like I said, I I did a video a while back, and some people have a difficulty in understanding that, you know, you you're either an emotional guy or you're either a technical guy. But sometimes you can have both, or you can just have one or the other. But it doesn't matter that they mm. they can coexist happily coexist. There is obviously a uh, you have the good taste and intuition to borrow from that vocabulary. You know, you're doing it instinctively. You know, yeah, but that's the thing because I don't know what I'm doing. I just have to do it on emotional level. Yeah. Does that feel happy enough? Does that feel sad enough? Does yeah. that feel? Uh, I I never think what are the notes I'm playing? What is the chords? Or like I said, I honestly don't know the names of most of the chords that I play. Okay. To be honest with you, Andy, that's what counts to for me anyway. It's like, you know, I listen to a lot of music. I listen to a lot of technical classical music and, you know, stuff like that. But when I listen to your music, there's nothing that quite gets me there. And I, I guess the other thing is that there's a certain affinity because I'm from South Wales, which, you know, Swindon is 75 miles east of Cardiff, where I'm from. Well, virtually every teacher at our, our secondary school was Welsh. <laughs> you were in trouble if they'd say angrily, go and see Mr. Jones. Which one does he mean? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of Joneses there. There's a An lot awful of, lot, yeah. Not many hand spells, but a lot of Joneses. <laughs> yeah, where, what's hand spell? Is, is that? It's my, well, my dad's Indian and my mum's Welsh. Ah, so it's an Indian name. Yes, yeah, well, it's apparently is a German name from many, many years ago. I so it's say Hanspel. For me, I was thinking, is that sort of something like Danish or Dutch or German or German? Yeah. The Dutch are the Deutsch, aren't they? It's the yeah. same sort of thing, you know. Right. Oh, wow. but, uh, but yeah, like I said, listen to listening to your music. That's that's I do get that sort of affinity. I do get those emotions and feelings and. You know, and, and t today has just been an absolute delight for me. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you, Andy. And and I'm so grateful that you've shared so much with me today, you know. And I hope I've asked you questions that you haven't been asked before. You know, that's that's the thing I worry about. I don't want to ask. No, it's, it, there's, a certain, there's a certain level of questions that most people ask, and I don't think we've gone there today. Oh, so I'm glad. I'm glad you're doing all right. You're oh, doing all right. right, you know. Well, uh, but I'll tell you what, so if, if my Desert Island album is probably Tony Williams' Lifetime Emergency, what's yours? Oh, mine would have to be English Settlement. No. And I'm not just saying that. My, I, I sincerely mean it. That That's the one that gets me out of all your albums. I know what you're going to be playing tonight. You're going to be yeah. playing. Playing that one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I, I I'm a bit speechless over that. I thought you were going to say some some miles or or no, no that's that's the, the first one that comes to mind. It's definitely it's up there for me. Yeah. Wow. So do you ever sort of jam along? Do you ever sit there and uh, you know? Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that's the chord he's doing, isn't it? Yeah. It's pretty much the one, yeah. yeah. And don't you just love the... Custom built to play on a guitar. Yeah. So cheeky. 
Oh, oh Shannon, it's, it's been a delight, and and now I shall I can I can sleep well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been wonderful andy and, and and i hope we we can do something again soon you know we absolutely can... I, I suppose i better write some more tunes damn it <laughs> okay well are you gonna hit the little red levi tag that, that oh. comes in the... oh yes this one here yeah i will before i say i say thank you and thank you so much man all right Sandy. Take, care, take care man Bye.